Hello everyone and once again welcome to another security and risk management professionals training session. In this uh, short video we're going to cover off on the Australian New Zealand uh, security risk management standard 31000 in a simplified mind map overview. For those who don't know me, my name is Tony Ridley, a security professional with over 20 years working in the industry um, as a consultant, author, speaker and advisor with significant background exp experience in the fields of intelligence, operation and consulting on the commercial side. So, as I said, we're going to talk about security risk management, in particular the Australian New Zealand uh, security risk management standard. Now, I'm not a big fan of the standard overall. Uh, the standard oversimplifies significant elements of the security risk management process. It often gets lost in its own language, it's difficult to follow, um, and it tends to overemphasize the more extreme or the smaller percentage spectrum of security risk management being things like uh, national infrastructure, terrorism and so on. However, uh, it does have a significant framework, a framework which is transferable and certainly for those either new to the industry or even those who w wish to check and validate their processes, um, it does have some valuable components, albeit difficult to find at times. So what we're going to do here is we're going to distill it and simplify it down into a mind map and an overall uh, aerial view of the entire contents to recalibrate the entire process um, and to provide us some insight into the contents and processes required for security risk management. So first of all, as I said, the standard for those who wish to uh, are unfamiliar with it or wish to look it up, it's the AS New Zealand uh, 31000 2009. Um, one of the first components is the communication and consult. First of all, it's important to have participation, seeking out the ability and capability of the individuals, the needs fulfillment, the opportunity associated, and above anything else, it's engaging and uh, engendering trust. We then need to look at the development of a communication strategy for the engagement of stakeholders, both senior management and external, if not other stakeholders in the process. Establishing the context is also extremely relevant and a significant priority in the process. So from an organizational context, we need to look at the internal elements such as objectives, business models, functions, strategies, process plans, structures, and so on. Um, also underestimated is elements such as industrial relations and also culture, because culture can be one of the, the most difficult things to influence and change, and it certainly takes significantly longer than the development of a risk assessment or methodology in the first place. Then we need to look at the external context from external stakeholders, competition, geopolitical, community, regulatory, and so on. These are not exhaustive lists by any uh, stretch of the imagination, however, they are good uh, foundations and good start points. Every organization being unique and every environment being unique, these are good elements to start with, but you would need to develop your own. Then when we look at the security risk management context, we need to develop goals and objectives, the processes or programs, stakeholders, structures, tools, techniques, accountabilities, constraints, assumptions, and then conduct confirmation that our context and our abilities is in accordance with the business objectives and those in the strategy development in the first place. We don't want to get down this path and then to find out that we've been taken too far to the left or too far to the right and we've lost uh, the context in which we're trying to operate. Then this is extremely important in tying into the final product which would be the development of a business case. In the commercial sense, whether you're in a government service or in the commercial sector, um, a sense of governance that it will be applied to the process, the objectives, alignment with the corporate and uh, business operations, the needs, resources and obviously the budget and scope associated with the particular business case. All of these are fundamental to any submissions, to particularly to senior management executives, to show the due diligence in the process and to, to cover all of the primary specific aspects leading up to and inclusive of the budget allocation associated, which is of course part of the security risk management process. In identifying the risk, first thing we need to do is the, is the data is to identify and collect information, both economical, political, supply, technology, and the list can be quite exhaustive, but it's this foundation, this cornerstone that's often overlooked by many individuals that adapt the more 
um, artistic um, subjective process, evidence, empirical information, um, substantiated facts is very, very important in this overall process. Then we need to look at the comparative controls, the controls that we have in place, the existing controls, not only those that we propose further on, but those controls and how they deter, detect, delay, respond and recover from all of the security risk management elements. Then we analyze, we start to then process, we've looked at the threat elements, now we're starting to analyze the risk. So then we start to identify and look at elements of the likelihood, and this is where I, I differ in terms of where the, uh, the security risk management standard itself, it oversimplifies the process and it, it does try to just lump things into very explainable, nice and easy boxes, such as rare, likely, possible, unlikely, um, and so on. And then we need to look at the consequence, you know, minimal, minor, moderate. More often than not, these are better articulated and defined within the commercial realms with monetary values. It's the impact on the assets such as uh, injury to personnel, loss of life, financial losses, uh, deferred payments, you know, far more granular and far more specific details than just broad brush terms such as minimal, moderate and so on. Then last but certainly not least, we look at the treatment of risks. Um, and there's a variety of options. Once we've analyzed all of these components, we can, um, uh, we can retain, we can share, we can exploit, avoid, monitor in particular. Um, some risks are absolutely unavoidable. The, the entire world is still filled with threats and there's a certain amount of risk that we have to accept, but we may have to monitor with a certain degree of assurance, performance and understandings that that is the baseline risk should it elevate or, or should it decline, um, then we need to be able to identify and process that and change our behavior if we have to. Um, and then obviously the acceptance, toleration and certainly the reduction of risks overall. Once we've completed this process, this is not carved in stone. This is a complementary cyclic process whereby on a, on a continued basis, not every three months, not every six months, not once a year, this is something that needs to be reviewed and something that needs to be collaborated across multiple jurisdictions, disciplines and certainly departments. So this is the overall framework. Very simple, very straight to the point, it covers all of the primary elements within the standards itself and it's much easier to both convey to a new individual and to go back as a ready source of reckoning um, or reference when comparing it to existing plans or developing plans. So that's been a simplified process for the Security Risk Management Standards from uh, Australian New Zealand uh, Security Risk Management Standards 31000. Um, Again, for those who have forgotten already, my name's Tony Ridley. If you would like any further information or a copy of the mind map and framework associated with the security risk management standards, please either visit my website at tony-ridley.com or feel free to send me an email at tony at tony-ridley.com. Once again, thank you all very much for joining in. If there's any further questions or follow-ups, uh, please pursue me outside of this particular video. Thanks very much. Goodbye.